Welcome back to Binging with Favish. Today we will be making a peanut butter jelly sandwich, but this time it will be more sophisticated. So before I can make a peanut butter jelly that is more sophisticated than normal peanut butter jelly, I need to figure out what all ingredients are in the peanut butter jelly. So first I gotta dissect it a little bit. Clearly we can see here we got some jelly, obviously, and we've got some peanut butter. The only thing I'm not exactly quite sure is, is what this substance is that's kind of holding the peanut butter jelly together. It kind of is being used as some type of tool in it. Um, I'm just gonna bite so I can get an idea of what the flavor's like. It's got a very classic taste. I still don't know quite what the substance is. I'm gonna have to do some research on that over at the computer. Okay, so from looking online, it looks like the other part of the peanut butter jelly is like wheat that's ground into flour that's mixed with the yeast and water to make this substance that kind of works as like a delivery tool for the peanut butter jelly. It looks like it's called a wheat sponge, or the more common popular name that most people would know is sponge of wheat. So now I just need to get my hands on some wheat sponge, and it looks like most grocery stores would sell them, so I'm just going to call around some grocery stores and see if I can find one that'll sell some sponge of wheat for me. Hello, I was just wondering if you have a wheat sponge. I'm sorry, what? Uh, if you have wheat sponge or a sponge of wheat. Um, I'm not sure. Is that, um, what, what department would that be, sir? I've never heard of that. Uh, grocery? Alright, let me put you on hold and try to get grocery for you. One moment. Alright, thank you. Can I help you? Hello, I'm looking for a wheat sponge and I was wondering if you might have it. Um, from what I've been reading online, it's like something people usually use for like peanut butter jelly sandwiches or like ham and cheese sandwiches. Now what is it? It's called a wheat sponge or a sponge of wheat. A sponge of wheat? Mm-hmm. And you use it on peanut butter sandwiches? Yeah, like peanut butter jelly sandwiches. Okay, let me. Is it food? Uh, yes. A sponge. Uh, it's a uh, food, yeah. Just a second. Thank you. So they have not heard of that or seen it, so they have no idea if we have something like that at all. Huh. Okay. Well, thanks, anyways. Hello, how can I help you? Hello, I was just wondering if you sold a product. Hello, Olivia. Uh, a wheat sponge. A what? A wheat sponge or a sponge of wheat. Anyone? Okay. No, so we don't have that. Oh, are you sure? I I know. I heard a lot of. I, we have a spot for it, but it's empty. Oh, okay. Thank you. Hello, uh, can I be directed to the grocery department? What? What do you mean by grocery department? What? I'm uh, just wondering if you guys have uh, a wheat sponge or a sponge of wheat. It's something that's like, uh, from what I was reading up online, was used for, like, to make a peanut butter jelly sandwich or a ham and cheese sandwich. You need it. What is it? It's like a, like a spongy, like, wheat thing. A spongy, like, wheat thing? Yeah, it's like a, a wheat sponge. Or a sponge of wheat. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just looking for, um, from what I can read up online, something kind of called like a wheat sponge or sponge of wheat. Uh, it's used for, I guess, like peanut butter jelly sandwiches and ham and cheese sandwiches. We just wanted something quick so we could feed feed ourselves for like uh, lunch breaks and stuff to take with us. And we wanted to make peanut butter jelly sandwiches, but we're missing that ingredient. And I'm trying to find it. What is it? What is it? Exactly? Uh, it's like a wheat sponge or sponge of wheat. Okay. Can you say that one more time? Sorry. Uh, it's a wheat sponge or a um, sponge of wheat. A wheat sponge? Yeah, like used on like sandwiches and stuff. A wheat sponge. Are we talking like a cream, a cheese sponge? Like what is it? It's like the, the, like the base of a sandwich. Like, you know, like, you put, uh, from what I know, is like you have, like, 
a base, which is the wheat sponge, and they put like peanut butter jelly on it and another of the sponge on it. It's it's like something edible. From it has like I guess like wheat and then like water and yeast to make it. Um, can you wheat? Because I'm not totally hearing you. Wheat. wheat or wheat. Like wheat. W h e a t. I guess it's made of like uh wheat and then yeast and like water and they mixed together and like baked. Oh, that, yeah, that, that's probably it. Thank you. So now that I've tracked down the wheat sponge, I just gotta pull, pull both slices out, then lay them on the counter, then I gotta pull out my jelly, and then just get the jelly nice and s squeeze out of the bag onto the bread, and then just spread it around with a fork. The fork is the best use for spreading a jelly. After the jelly side's down, I just need to pull out the peanut butter, get the peanut butter squeezed out and onto the bread, and then just move the peanut butter around and spread it all around with a knife because a butter knife is the best way of spreading around peanut butter. So with that we have the complete base for the sandwich completed. I take three marshmallows, cook them over your gas stove top. You'll want to get them nice and burnt so that way they'll have the crispy texture that you'll want for your sandwich as well as they'll have a little bit of burnt flavor that'll give it that smoky flavor you always want. And then you just spread them right around the sandwich, get it nice and even as much as you can and then you'll be set. If for some reason you have a hard time getting the marshmallows to light, just go ahead and just soak them in gasoline right in a bucket, just like that. Get your hand in the gasoline, that's okay, don't worry. All the gasoline will come right off your hand and the marshmallows when you heat it up over the stove. Next thing you will want to do is just squirt chocolate syrup right on top of one side of the sandwich and that'll be a good layer. Follow the chocolate syrup by sprinkling some chocolate chips right on top of the chocolate syrup, that'll be good as well. Add a little bit of cayenne, a little bit of cinnamon, a bit of chili powder, a couple pinches of salt, a few drops of maple syrup, just a wee little bit of hot sauce, a tiny amount of cheese, lastly a drop of vanilla. Go ahead and put the two halves together to make the sandwich. Then you just want to take soft melted butter and spread it on the top of the sandwich. Any completely melted butter is okay because you can just take the bottom of the sandwich and just place it right into the melted butter. that will give it a nice coating as well and it'll be perfect and ready to go. Take the completed sandwich, put it on a pan on your stove top. You want the temperature to be around medium to high, and then just keep flipping the sandwich as well as keeping it moving so it does not burn too much, but you want it to cook and really get that crispy texture. That's what you're really looking for on the outside of the sandwich. Once you've got that, you're ready to really serve and eat it, so you'll just want to flip it right off of the pan and onto a nice new clean plate. It looks absolutely fabulous, just like me, fabish. It is gluten-free, vegan-free, dairy-free, weight-free, calorie-free, any of those healthy buzzwords. And now let's just take a bite and try it out. This should be really, really tasty. Mm -hmm. And that for sure is going to join the Clean Plate Club off the camera. Thank you for watching Binging with Fabish. Join me next time as I explore another meal and make it a little bit more sophisticated. Make sure you share this video because sharing is caring. <laughs> it was slap for me. <laughs> she didn't even give me a time to <laughs> they have a slot for her, Jordan. They have a slot for the wheat sponge. Okay. Okay, okay.